The world ended. Didn't you get the memo? What do you suggest? You're listening to Dead Air on 89.5 The Wave, KCFB Ferguson. Think about something else. <sighs> Puppies and kittens. <sighs> Dead puppies and kids. That is right. We are back with Dead Air here on 89.5 The Wave. And I am your host, your friendly neighborhood DJ, Jazz Hands. We got a big show for you guys today. I am so, so excited to get right down to talking about last Sunday's epic Walking Dead episode. Uh, spoiler warning ahead. We are going to do a little bit of spoilers, but I think you should kind of get that, like, that feel. Sorry, I had to move the mic. Uh, I think you're going to kind of get that feel a little bit, like, now you know it it's we're talking about last sunday's epic walking dead episode and i oh my gosh there was so much uh we got a big cast coming up here uh in a little bit they're out right now you know fighting off some walkers but they'll be back and we're gonna get right down to it so uh let's just kind of break right in you know uh i'll kind of give my little bit thoughts uh i love the episode i think this was definitely one of uh, their strongest episodes in the series uh, as a whole, there was a lot going on. There was a lot of interesting moments and a lot of, honestly, there was a lot of character development within this kind of chaos. It was so much fun. And, uh, you know, we were right. We were right. You know, uh, the wolves did attack. The, the, the wolves did attack. Now, maybe the whole Gabriel blowing the horn thing, that might have been a little bit too cheesy. Um, but still, all in all, it was a fantastic episode. I, 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 oh, so much to kind of get into, but, um, I didn't really have any problems with the episode in and of itself. There's definitely a lot of kind of controversy, well, not controversy, but there's definitely a lot of different, uh, opinions when we were talking about it a little bit off air, uh, that we've noticed or that we, uh, we, we kind of, we, 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 we disagreed a little bit on some stuff, but we agreed on a lot of others. I mean, for one, Carol was amazing in this episode, and this was a very Carol-driven episode, I feel. And a lot of the characters had uh, what I said a little bit earlier about character development within this chaos. I mean, Morgan had character development, Carol had character development, even uh, Carl and Gabriel had some character development within this episode, and there was a lot, but it still was very, very heavy on the action, and that was fun. This is kind of like what I like to see. You know, I'm all down for the slow episodes. I, I'm sure within three, four episodes, it's going to slow down. You know, I think we're still going to get... Uh, we still have to deal with the walkers heading straight towards Alexandria, and they're going to come, and it's going to be complete and utter chaos. But this episode really did a good job of having chaos and having a lot of good character development. Um, I mean, kind of right... Oh, and real quick, too. The episode was titled JSS, uh, Just Survive Somewhere. Uh, and that was a really kind of strong, you know, good statement, I think. It really just does apply to everyday life. Kevin Smith said it better, like, couldn't have said it better himself on uh, Talking Dead. You know... It's about just surviving anywhere. It's about making a life for yourself in in the world. And I, I, I can kind of agree with that. You know, either you're here or if you get moved around to place to place to place, you know, just survive somewhere. Keep living, keep moving, keep going forward. You know, bad stuff happens, but you keep moving forward. I found that that's really, really powerful and that can apply to everyday life. So um, I like that. And it was really cool. Well, not cool, but it was nice to see that we weren't wrong or that Enid wasn't a spy. Because I think a lot of us, I know, were really, really worried that Enid was a spy for uh, the wolves or for. Uh, another group, but it's been kind of confirmed that she's not. She was just a normal girl who happened to run into some walkers and her parents died, you know, uh, and then she uh, walked around for a while. And I, I'm pretty sure Morgan's not going to like her very much just because uh, uh, she ate a turtle and he was trained by the Teenage Mutant Ninja Hero Turtles. So um, laugh. That was funny, people. <laughs> but um, no, like, so... It, it was nice to kind of see this backstory towards Enid, who has kind of been a little bit of a mystery up to this point. Uh, it was good to get some confirmation that she wasn't a spy, that she wasn't a sleeper agent uh, that we know of yet. 
I don't think she is. And maybe she might run into a group that's better than the wolves and saviors. Uh, I don't know. But it was it was it was really nice to kind of see her backstory and and you know these characters have gone you know through so much and this attack on Alexandra was I mean it was crazy and it was right out of nowhere like I, I was expecting it to happen but I wasn't expecting it to happen as quickly as it did it was it was really really fun to see and I, I have a theory on the attackers um and my, my whole theory is, and I'm probably going to restate this a little bit later once when we kind of get everybody together, but uh, I really think that these are the chaos makers. They're the group that the big pack of the wolves send in without any weapons, without guns, because Carol said well, they don't have guns. If they had guns, they would have used them. They don't have guns. They attack silently, and they cause as much chaos as possible to see if they can take a place. A majority of them are probably going to be are wiped out, and I could see it being as like some sort of initiation for the wolves. Like, you have to go into this town with just a knife and just do this, and you have to prove yourself. You have to prove that you're a force to be reckoned with, and then we'll start giving you the more dangerous mission. So go in first and be the chaos makers. You you kill people with knives, you act as crazy as possible, you fight, and if you come back alive, well, then you're probably going to get a little bit of higher pecking order within the pack. Now, like I said, these are the chaos makers. They come in first. I think that if any of them did get out or if they didn't get any out, the wolves, I think, are definitely still out there. It's not just this small pack. I really think that these guys are going to go back to their big pack and be like, okay, this is what they have. They have guns and they have people that know how to fight. They know how to fight and know how to kick a lot of butt real, real quick. So we need a bigger force. And then I think that they're going to have the army and the pack come in again with heavier weaponry and really, really demolish everything. But it looks like with Noah's thing, it looks like their whole method is attack, sneak in, attack, have something come in, burst through a gate or something, open it up and then just demolish the entire, you know, town. Um, but I still think that they're the chaos makers. They are the ones that come in. And I think we're not, I don't think we're done with the wolves quite yet. I think we still have a while to go with the wolves. Um, and I want to get to the saviors. Trust me. I want to get to the saviors. I want to get my, to my boy Negan. Cause as soon as he gets in there, it's a game changer. The series changed, but that, that that's neither here nor there. That's totally different. It I'm, I, I still think that the wolves are going to become a major factor. Maybe not in these next couple episodes, but I could see them coming back uh, at the uh, you know mid-season finale, stronger with a bigger army, saying, "Okay, look, well, you killed a whole bunch of our men. Um, now let's go." And I think, I think definitely Rick, um, I because I, I don't know how the series is going to play out. I could see Rick being like, "Well, we're going to fight for this place. No more contemplating about running. No more doing this. Let's fight and let's kill these people." Because they're trying to take what we have. And I think it's going to be a lot more different from the governor and everything like that. So that's just kind of my first kind of initial thoughts. Like I said, there was so much in this episode just to, you know, dive into. I mean, I I, oh, I loved it. It, it, it was, it was honestly, it's one of my favorite. Mar- it's one of my favorite episodes. It, it is by far one of my favorite episodes uh within this first uh within the whole entire series you know morgan had such good character development and i'm going to get into that a little bit later because i want to hear other people's kind of opinions on it but yeah i i I really think that him and carol had some big kind of character developments and aaron and uh even eugene and uh, tara had some character development within and of itself um so that's going to be fun, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. Uh, we're going to be taking a break here in one moment, but if you want to hear last week's, or if you missed last week's episode of Dead Air, you can check out facebook.com slash STL Dead Air, and you can listen to last week's show, um, our Fear the Talking Dead, or not Talking Dead, uh, Fear the Dead Air uh, show where we talked about Fear the Walking Dead and... Every, every everything that's kind of 
uh, about this show is on Facebook, and that's facebook.com slash STL Dead Air. So stay tuned because we got a lot more fun stuff coming up down the pipes, uh, and stay tuned. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. So we'll be back in a bit. You gotta go, man. I gotta go. Stay tuned for more Dead Air on 89.5 The Wave with Jazz Hands. Dead Air is back on 89.5 The Wave with Jazz Hands. Today's your lucky day, fellas. You've been pardoned by the state of Georgia. You're free to go. That is right. We are back here on 89.5 The Wave, and I am your host, your friendly neighborhood DJ, Jazz Hands. And I got everybody together again. Yay! Woo-hoo. So... Yes, I am joined with the one, the only Paul. Hey. And the one and only Anna Mae. Hello. And we are here talking about last Sunday's epic Walking Dead episode. Now, I talked a little bit before about uh, how awesome the character development was and how fun this episode really, really was. So let's let's dive right in, like, right to it. Now, there was a, uh, there was an opening scene uh, when Carol is in the... Uh, kitchen talking to kind of you know the desperate doing the desperate housewife thing <laughs> oh that was great you know she she she's talking to the girls and um the one of the women's like oh you're just a hero you know you you really you know you're just uh a hero you do such fantastic stuff with casserole and stuff like do you think that was foreshadowing Mm, yeah I, I i i think there was a little bit and unfortunately none of those ladies who declared her a hero were around to actually see it nope yeah <laughs> yeah you know it was it was a really big carol driven episode this time mm. yeah i there were a lot of other characters that made big steps mm-hmm. but i think carol's was probably the 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 driving character. Yeah, definitely. She was the driving force in this episode. Yeah, yeah, and definitely with with everything that did happen, it was such a build up and I'm really, I mean, Carol for I mean, she's she just escalated throughout the yeah. entire mm-hmm. series from going from just uh, an abused housewife who was really quiet, didn't really say much to taking back a town. You know, to, yeah. to frame people from. And and I have one thing, and I don't know if you want to touch on this later or what, but did you see the mirror development in this episode? Between. Uh, there was, there is another character, a freshly introduced character who is starting to mirror Carol's development. Morgan? No. Jesse. Yeah, I was about to say Jesse. Ja- yeah. Yeah. You know, that's. We can we can talk about that. Yeah, um. I, I thought that to me that was probably one of the most interesting scenes that they filmed in this, and that's just because you see what a total badass Carol is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and then you see Jesse who's cowering away mm-hmm. from Pete, and now Pete is gone, and she's like, "Okay, we're gonna Sam, let's hide in the closet," and then she hears them go, and she sees somebody, and. All of a sudden, it's like Mama Bear got loose. Yeah. And Mama Bear's got scissors. <laughs> well, because you know. it was to protect her son. And, you know, she 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 did the one, I think, kind of right thing. And I think it's, honestly, if there was ever a good kind of silver lining towards uh, being with Pete, it's how to take a hit and how to just pretend that you're knocked out. And Carol did that, too, if I remember yeah. right. Yeah, she did. Way back in. When? Yeah, way back when uh, when Ed was still alive. She would take, because I remember there was one scene, if I were, I'm going to have to go back and watch season one, but there was one scene where Ed hit her, and she kind of did the whole, oh. Possum. Yeah, she played possum, and then she got back up later, and people were asking her about it. She's like, it's it's okay, it's nothing. It's not the worst. And it was, it wasn't so much that, you know, she played possum, but she showed that, yeah, I know how to take the hit. And continue going. Mm-hmm. I, I do not remember that scene at all. The only thing that comes close is when uh, Ed starts getting uppity and Shane, uh, you know, the one moment I really like Shane, you know, beats the snot out of him. Yeah, and yeah. I think that was after the scene I'm talking Yeah, I thought it was after about, that. Because I, th- I yeah. think Shane was, was kind of hacked off that mm-hmm. Ed had already beaten the crap out of Carol. Yeah, well, and he was also mad about Lori and something. Well, like that yeah, too, but know? Shane had his issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shane. God. But I just I see a very very interesting parallel between where Carol started and where she's headed, 
and we have somebody who's in the same position Carol was right after Ed died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now the whole thing that, like, makes me worry about Jesse just a little is that Carol had the right kind of development, and it slowly grew. Yeah, Jesse went from, I can't fight back to... I'm going to kill you with okay. a scissors. I, I'm going to take the hit. I'm going to fake it and now full outrage. Mm-hmm, and that's yeah. that's the only thing that scares me with Jesse's development is she went to rage. Carol does not rage when she's killing. Yeah. Carol is extremely cold and calculated and she thinks Jesse just went, you know, Ballistic. okay, I've got it and boom and she just did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well... Because I, I, I can see where you're coming from from there, too. It does seem that Carol does it, because we've always said this, Carol does it to where I need to do this to survive. These people are trying mm-hmm. to kill us. I'm going to do it, but I don't hold a grudge against them in some aspect. It's it's not necessarily out of anger. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Jesse is very much anger. It seemed like it was very angry and almost overkill. Oh, it was, it oh, was, it was definitely yeah. overkill. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with that. Um, with her with the uh, the jumps like hers, I can kind of see how much rage she held in. But again, we're doing the parallel to Carol. Carol developed in with uh, like we said with Jesse, it was her, you know, holding back all the emotions that she had when Pete would abuse her, would abuse her, would abuse their children, that she had to hold back. Once she was attacked by somebody else, it was released like a like just like a wildfire. Yeah, and I th- I think it, it was definitely because maybe pent up aggression, but it was also because she was definitely trying to save her son. Yes. Yeah. She no, wanted definitely. to save her son, and 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 I mean anybody, you know, I think would do that for their kid. And that 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 mm-hmm. definitely factors into it. Yeah. 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 So uh, Jesse, I am worried that it might go a little bit too far, and she might pull a Beth. You know. Yeah. Where well, I know where I have to be. Shink, but like. Well, and you know, you got to think, Beth's weapon of choice was scissors. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. no. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, they are very, very um, prone to foreshadowing little tiny things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They've, they've, they've foreshadowed uh, quite a lot. But So do we do we call it now Jesse's going to die by scissors? <laughs> I don't know if Jesse's, like, you know, I don't know if it's going to be, like, Clue, but I think maybe Jesse... If, if if it's not handled in the right way, her kind of rage or the way she kills, it, it's going to probably end up a little bit bad. And I think Rick's going to lose, you know, his new boo. Yeah. So, you know, Poor that Rick. that's just a that's like that's just what I think. But uh, so, what do you guys? I mean, because I noticed this in it was changing gears just a little bit. I noticed this in the hospital when Tara and Eugene kind of went to the doctor's office to get mm-hmm. aspirin. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you guys notice how defensive he got when, uh, what's the one? Denise. Ladies? Denise. When Denise kind of was like, like, what's the aspirin for? And he was just like, well, you're a doctor. Like he got so defensive over Tara, almost over nothing. And this kind of mm-hmm. leads into the same boat with Jesse a and, little bit. Yeah. And I don't think it's necessarily Eugene defensive over the group. Although in the last one, he was about ready to get defensive over uh, Carter's plans towards Rick and everybody. Yeah. I, I, Eugene has found a, a group and he's found a piece of himself as well. He's, yeah. he's found his courage. He, mm-hmm. he went to the wizard and the wizard gave him courage. Um, but I think he's Anna, Anna still face palmed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I still think he's dealing with being a coward. And I think he knows that, Deep down, he still kind of is a coward. Oh, he most certainly mm-hmm. is. I think my services are best used back here. But it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I For me, I feel like I can respect him a little bit more that he's like, yes, I'm openly a, cur- like a coward. Mm-hmm. I can't do what they do because I'm afraid. But when it gets down to it, I will defend this group with my life if yeah. I have to. Mm-hmm. But I th- I, where I was going was more along the lines of, yes, he will do that for the group, but he will do damn near anything for Tara. I agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think Tara and him are like best uh, friends. Yeah. Best I was going to say there, there is no romantic interest no. because no. Tara's not into people like Eugene. With no. mullets. Um, <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like mullets. <laughs> she doesn't like mullets. It's, it's a sad thing, but um, they're going to introduce Tara's new girlfriend and she's going to have a mullet now. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, 
that's what's going to happen. Either way, okay. <laughs> go on. Yeah. You were saying Eugene's going to dress. Eugene's going to cross dress. Oh no, oh. Um, Eugene! I don't want to see that. Please don't put that in. If you're listening, do not make that no. happen. No. Um, but uh, Eugene has a bond with Tara. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I, I I realized when they first met, he was hitting on her very very blatantly yeah. because she wasn't Rosita, and I think Rosita's already threatened to kick his ass. <laughs> yeah. If he kept hitting on her. Yeah. And so it's like, oh hey, there's another female. I'm gonna hit on her, and you mm. know, he kind of got the vibe that okay, she's not interested in guys. I'm gonna continue anyway. Yeah, but it, it wasn't like because I feel if Rosita, she was with Abraham, and. You know, Rosita would threaten to kick his ass. I think it was that definitely that Tara was, and especially like the 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 back and forth they kind of had when I think either when he messed up the bus or oh yeah, yeah. when she was just like, well, you're part of this group now. Yeah, deal with it. Yeah, no, I I agree, and and Tara has really brought a lot out in Eugene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's my favorite character, honestly, one of my favorites. I love her. I love the hell out of Tara. I won't I won't take her as a favorite. Favorite newer. Maybe. Yeah. But favorite overall, favorite newers, I would probably have to say Tara and Aaron. Yeah. And I yeah. really liked Heath. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Heath is yeah. good. When, when you started meeting Heath, Heath is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Heath, but we still need a little bit more to get to use to Heath because he was one episode, I believe. Yeah, he was yeah. in the first yeah. episode and that's yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, and we're still trying to deal with the clean of I I think this next episode to kind of foreshadow, I think this next episode's going to be if the first part when the truck hit was them doing it, I think this part's going to be Rick when he was running and them doing it while the fight's ending in Alexandria. Um I think Rick Yeah, we're already going to predictions. Um, yeah, we can skip around a little bit. Well. I, I really think Rick's going to come up on the aftermath. I don't think he's going to come up as the fight is ending, although it would be awesome if Rick walked up and the guy uh, from the Wolves who had the gun pulled it on Rick. Oh, thinking, oh, I don't know who the hell you are. <laughs> I'm the guy who just shot you in the head. Dipstick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I could see that kind of happening formula-wise, but um, let's kind of go back fun. to Eugene just a little bit because he had a really good line. To the doctor. Oh, to Denise. Yeah, yeah. He, he. You know, he said, and this is kind of getting back to what I was saying, where I respect him more for saying this. Where mm-hmm. it's like you don't want to be a coward. Yeah. Yeah, and he said, "I know that. I know that from personal experience, experience or yeah. something like that." Yeah, it was something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Where, and I feel that like it really does eat him up inside that he is a coward, but he just is. Yeah, and, and I, I really, it. I, th- I think he's going to try and change it. Yeah, I, I I have to agree with that. Um, he's definitely coming out, well, uh, more coming into his own um, as we've started seeing him, especially him getting the courage from Tara. You know, I see them as more of a brother-sister relationship. He's getting his courage from her, and in return, she's she was a lot kind of, I wouldn't say tougher, but she was kind of more hard on him and hard on everyone else. And he's actually, I think Eugene has actually softened her to be a little... A little not kinder, but a little not as aggressive as she was. Let's now kind of uh, change gears and let's kind of talk about Carl. Because Carl had a lot of mm. fun and interesting kind of character developments. Um, Carl was within fun the this show. episode. Yeah. Yeah. Car- Carl was really, really fun this episode because there was, a, there was a couple of things that I noticed that he did that I really liked. The one was Ga- with Gabriel, and we're going to get into that. <laughs> uh, but another one was... Kind of him and Enid when they were protecting the house and how he took control. And I, I want to kind of talk about their relationship because it seems like they have one, but they don't. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a fair assessment. If, if that makes sense. So, I mean, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, like, what do you guys necessarily think about uh, when he talked to Father Gabriel? Like, what, what was your guys' like first impression? The, and the Gabriel thing... I liked because Carl was just as hard on Gabriel as everyone else has been. And then he turned around and said, meet me at three. I'll show you how to do what you need to do. Yeah. So it was basically, I don't trust you. I know you screwed us all over. And I know you're saying, look, I, hey, it wasn't, it wasn't you. It was me. I, I had doubts in my own, you know, 
need to be here or my own right to be here, Mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying to make myself better. And Carl, bless him, (laughs) he looked at it and he said, I really don't like you. And I don't like what you did to me and my group and my dad and these other people that have helped us survive. We've become family. I don't like what you did to my family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think Carl in the long run is saying it's better for all of us if you know how to kill if you need to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can agree with that. And I I, I, wanna, I also want to go a little bit step further where when Carl said, I think you should tell the group first. When he said that to Gabriel. Mm-hmm. And instead of Gabriel going, oh, well, no, no, he didn't make an excuse. He goes, yeah, I think you're right. Thank you, Carl. And then started walking away. I think that was more clarification that he's really ready to try and he will take kind of a beating from the group, you know, emotionally and stuff to try to get back in good. He's, he's yeah. admitting the mistake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's willing to take, as you said, take the take the beating, you know, whether verbally or figuratively. Ma- well, maybe a little physically, depending on how angry Rick is that day. <laughs> yeah. And getting, you know, hoping for a second chance after the beating's done. You so. know, I'm, I'm thinking Michonne may be willing to do a little whoop up on him, <laughs> I too. I would love to see that. Yeah, yeah, I, I would watch, this, I would pay to watch that one. <laughs> oh, I think everybody would, but I, I think definitely the scene between uh, Gabriel and Carl, I think Gabriel's going to become, he might become one of my favorite characters. He He's he has a lot more to go, and I'm interested to see what they do with him. You know, the neat thing about Gabriel is he was brought in flawed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it, it's it's funny because everyone in Alexandria immediately trusted Gabriel because of the collar. Yeah. Because he was Father Gabriel. Mm-hmm. And now I think, you know, one of the things that that shows me uh, symbolically is that old roles don't necessarily matter in the new way of doing things. Old roles, yeah, you may be Father Gabriel. Okay, that's great. You're still going to do what it takes to survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the, the Alexandrians just flat out, oh, he said this. We're going to take this into account. And then Rick went bat squat. Yeah, <clears throat> with didn't Pete. help his case. It really did not help Rick's case. Mm-hmm. But in the end, Rick was proven right, and I think that really shook Gabriel, and it also opened the Alexandrians' eyes that okay, this guy is—he's got some issues. He's—he's he's yeah. got problems. He's not everything yeah. he says he is, and I'm sure that in the in the meantime, he's—you know—Deanna has talked to the rest of the group and said. Yeah. Okay, so this Gabriel guy, yeah, we picked him up in a church where he locked his parishioners out because he was a coward. <laughs> he makes Eugene look like Michonne, okay? Yep. Just saying here. <laughs> yep. And so I think there's there's a little disdain coming around from everybody. I don't think it's just Rick's group. I think the rest of the, the Alexandrians have heard, okay, so... Yeah, he said they were bad people, and they really are the only thing that has saved us a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The um, you mentioned Deanna was actually um, what I want to say because she was the one who you know she trusted Rick's word and Rick's group. And once Gabriel came, you know, saying, "Well, you know, they're they're bad people," it's like, uh huh. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take your word. I'm clearly not going to believe you. And look at that. The one person, it was sad that the one person who saw what happened to him had one of the most, if not the hor- most horrible thing happen to her and then to her family. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, well, met losing Reg. They'll say there's one or there, there's another death that's kind of bad to her, but Reg was, was sad. The other one, I don't care about. Uh, yeah, but but, it's, a, it's, a, it's her son. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and I want to dive into Deanna a little bit later. Cause yeah. I want to also talk about, because we were on Carl. I want to yeah. talk about, I mean, I think Father Gabriel uh, is definitely a very interesting character. He's, he's one gonna, to watch. He's going to yeah. become into his own, and I'm really excited. But when, I think definitely when he was uh, talking to Carl and him wanting to learn how to fight, it's almost kind of, it reminds me a little bit back to where, uh, how Andrea was with Beth back in season two. Yeah. When it's yeah. like, look, if she wants to kill herself, she she has that right. Mm-hmm. She can mm-hmm. go do that, but she tried. 
and she didn't want to. Mm-hmm. Now she knows I don't want to and I want to fight. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. what kind of Gabriel needed to go through. All of them kind of, I think, need to kind of go through that little moment in and of itself. And really, Gabriel has tried to kill himself oh, several yeah. times over the last few episodes, both the end of last season and the beginning of this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he's he's laid down and let a walker come at him and then finally just, no, and he got up and he bashed its head in with a rock. Mm-hmm. He has gone out. He's done so many dangerous things that I that's a very interesting parallel between him and Beth. And I think you're right. I think yeah. he's finally gotten to the point where I don't want to die. And if I'm not going to die, I'm going to fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And he and I, I think it also kind of goes to what um, Rosita said to uh um, Deanna's son. Oh, to Spencer. Yeah, yeah. When yes. she was when when he when um after the kind of fallout, he was just like, so does this happen, to you guys, every day out there? And she's like, yeah, but you need to have something worth fighting for, because then it all becomes then it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, you have to have a good group of people, and I think that's what Gabriel is finding. He he's finding these are a good group of people. They're messed up, but so am I. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, to to quote from the the the, the scriptures, uh, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Yeah, Gabriel is certainly not without sin. No. Yeah, uh, but okay. So let's kind of change gears again and kind of get back to Carl, because I think like I want to talk about Carl and Enid because I think the two of them. I mean, for one, I absolutely love the scene when she kind of walked in and was just like, "I'm leaving." I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. And Carl was like, you really doing this now, girl? Sit down. <laughs> shut up. We're, oh. we're defending this place. Come on. Okay. You know. if, if we're going to touch on Enid, I love the fact that they told her backstory. Um, oh, they yeah. did it very short. Still told it. But they still told it. And that gives you a lot of background on why she does the things that she does. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's very funny that. Her backstory is a lot like Carl's. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's very, very similar to Carl's in that, you know, she's kind of had to grow up fast. She's kind of had to grow up more on her own than Carl did. Yeah, Carl still at least has his dad. Hers, her, oh, that was so traumatic. Carl has his entire family. Well, and I'm talking his yeah. dad, Michonne, Mom. Maggie, <laughs> Glenn. You know, well, in the, be- in the beginning, he only he had his mom. He had, well, he had Lori mom, and Shane. Know, yeah, and then and then when Rick, you know, was found alive, he had his dad back, and then mom died, and then Shane. Well, whatever. Yeah. He still has his his dad, his physical father, but right. he's also his ex- his extended family has come into his life. Mm-hmm. Enid has nobody, and that's that's the biggest thing. Enid had nobody, and I think that you were mentioning a relationship with Carl. Yeah, I think that is part of the reason why they have a relationship, but they don't have a relationship mm-hmm. yeah yeah because like the uh the actress i don't remember her name but she was too really many good. cooks what too many cooks okay. too she many... was in she was in too many cooks oh, okay. really okay i okay. have i was like wait what that's her name no it was <laughs> no. katie something yeah something like that but yeah. her saying that you know the reason you know people are like oh you know there's a little something between her and and Carl, it's like, well, there sort of is, but she can't allow herself to get close to anybody anymore because she doesn't want to lose them like she did her parents. So it's like, there's a relationship, as you said, but there's not. She doesn't want to get close, but she wants to be close. It's kind of a magnet. Yeah, I, I would I would definitely agree with that, where she doesn't want to get close, but I also kind of feel that Carl might feel, like, look at her and be like, well, this could have been me, or this could be me still. Oh, yeah. At some point mm. in the future, everybody I know could die. Yeah. And yeah. this could very well be me, so am I going to be kind of like her and just be mystery? Or, like, I, I think the two of them definitely feed back and feed off of each other to where she wants to be like this, but he's worried about being... You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's really confusing, but... And the other thing is that Carl was... I mean, he really stepped up. He's like, come in, I'll protect you. I'm already protecting Judith. Come in, I'll protect you. When Ron walked past, who mm-hmm. he saw Enid and Ron canoodling and looked like he was going to go over and go all Rick and Pete on Ron's little behind. Yeah, it's like, Carl, no. Carl, It's no. like, come on, Carl, Papa, don't do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Poor Carl, Papa. But then when Rick, or Rick, when Ron really got into it and was in danger, Carl stepped out. Guy tried to take the gun from him. He popped him a couple in the chest. He's like, Ron, get in the house. I'll help you. you can, you're safe. We'll, we'll keep you safe. And Ron was just like, no, I don't think so. 
And it yeah. was really interesting to watch that jealousy flip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Enid was, you know, all snuggled up with Ron. And then all of a sudden, when it hit the fan, Enid was in Carl's house, and Ron was just like, no, I want no part of that. No. Yeah. You know, and Ron's Ron's got the sullen teenager thing, and, mm-hmm. you know, your dad yeah. murdered my dad. And, well, yeah. I, and I, think, I think it is, too, and I believe you were saying it a little bit, Anna, where it, it seems like Carl, even though he was jealous, could put that emotion on the back burner. Yeah. To protect survive. People, to, yeah. To survive. And I don't think um, Ron's there yet. No. Ron clearly, because he saw Enid and he saw that Carl saved him. It's like, okay, your dad killed my dad and then you're saving me and you're kind of, you're hanging out with my girl. Uh, no, I'm going to go walking home in this mess, mess of bodies wolf attack and in the middle of middle of the wolf attack which took 45 minutes <laughs> exactly <laughs> was... the amount of time for carol to bake oh, a casserole oh my gosh that was yep. beautiful that yep. was yeah but interesting. I, I do like that and, and i think you know because it's interesting when and, and it brings them more and kind of solidifies that carl and enid have a relationship when she you know says i'm going and i think carl says well don't say don't you know, don't say goodbye to me she she came yeah. in and she goodbye. said, I, I just came by to say goodbye. And he goes, you don't say goodbye. There's, yeah. I don't want goodbyes. Yeah. 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 He said he's yeah. He's saying that. And then her like, well, you know, I'm just going to go now. And then gunshots like, OK, get in the house. Yeah. And, and she didn't try to fight with him. She didn't argue. She actually. And I love the scene where Carl's sitting there with the gun and Enid kind of plops down and squats back to back yeah. with him with the knife. And it's that like, OK, cool. if something comes in that way. I got it. If something comes in this way, you knife it, and by the time I feel you getting up, I'm whipping around with the gun, and I'll shoot it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, I think... they, they seemed like they just immediately both went into, I don't want to say predator mode, but Survi- protection mode. I would say protection yeah, survival mode. Yeah, they, they, they were covering their corners, and they were going to protect, and if anybody tried to get in. And that, I, okay, realistically, if this continues on and we get to see <laughs> these two characters grow up, they're going to be the power couple to, like, and the apocalypse. Right I don't up. know. Oh, I don't know. Gosh. Depends if Daryl and Carol or Daryl and Michonne hook up. That's true. That that That's would true. be the power couple. You're That's going true. no Michonne, you're going Carol, right? I'm going Daryl Carol. Sorry, that's me. Or Daryl Rick. We don't know how this goes. You know. <laughs> no, no, no. Rick Michonne. Rick Michonne, Daryl Carol. That's mine. Ooh, that would be But but okay. That sounds like a cage match, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. it does. But... Carol and Carol versus Rick and Michelle this weekend. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Exactly. Uh, I, mean, cool. I would go see that. I would, I, would, see that. I would pay to go see that. Same here. But, okay, so, I mean, they definitely do have an interesting relationship, and she, they they can find it, and I really, really enjoy their relationship, and I can't kind of, I'm wondering if she's going to come back. I heard that she would. Um, well, on Talking Dead, yeah. She did say, um, I think when you see Enid again, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good pleasantly surprised or a mm. bad pleasantly surprised. Well, I mean, there is no good or bad pleasantly surprised. I mean, well, let's face it, really, if it's a if it's a pleasant surprise, it's not going to be bad. And if it's bad, it's not going to be pleasant. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I, I could think of a lot of bad stuff that would be pleasant for me in The Walking Dead. My... <laughs> A lot. Let's be um, real, guys. My, my personal thoughts on this is that I think you're right. I think we're going to uh, have a little bit of lull from the wolves. Mm-hmm. And I think that I think we're going to see them have to deal with the horde. And I think Enid's going to come back when the wolves come back. Yeah. And no, I do not think Enid is a wolf sleeper agent or anything like that. No, I don't. I think no. that was all. That, that was, was disbanded. That was a plant, and that was oh, in the JSS. Oh, the, yeah. yeah. The they, reveal they on that, that was great. Yeah, yeah. I love. I loved that. Just survived somewhere, and I somehow. said it, somehow, somehow. Okay, yeah, just survived somehow. And and I, I said this a little bit earlier, and I think uh, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. Yeah. Kevin Smith said it best where that uh, just applies. We can't say that. Wait, which part? Oh, no, that. Okay. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, anyway, there was something no, that Kevin no, no, Smith no. said on Talking Dead no. we can't say. We are a family show. <laughs> okay, mm. we, keep, we, we keep our decapitations Although, and our, our eating of turtles clean to a minimum. Although, uh. it was beautiful in that moment watching the vision, Paul Bettany, unable to speak for like three minutes. 
because he was yeah. laughing so hard at what Kevin Smith said. Oh, Kevin yeah. Smith was fun. Yeah, I love I love Kevin Smith, but um, I wow. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, Kevin Smith. Yeah, that was that was kind of her mantra. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. She it does really apply to like real life, like yeah, yeah. You know what life is. So let's let's switch gears now because we're almost out of time. Aww. Yeah, gosh, Just a that's, little. that's shocking. And we still have so much to go through because I want to talk about Morgan and I want to talk more about Carol. Yes. Okay. Those, are, those are the two real big ones. I mean, for one, Morgan in this episode, and we, we kind of disagreed a little bit. Well, and first off, I have to uh, admit that I completely screwed the pooch last weekend. I said, yeah, Mar- Morgan was not going to give up. Morgan is going to stay non- Lethal. Yeah. And yeah. yeah that, that, do? Didn't, that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So, I but, but you were right about the attack. Yeah. The mm-hmm. wolf attack. So, well, even, you know, 50 50. Well, You're well, going to give me credit and. Yeah, it's credit. Okay. Credit. All right. I'll take you, it. You still got a point. I broke even. <laughs> yeah. You broke even. So, you, you didn't gain anything. You didn't lose anything. So, we're good now. It's. If you gain something, you lose. So, we're good. But, um,. No, Morgan's whole, and honestly, I'll be really honest, because of Morgan with the staff, I kind of want to do take, like, staff lessons. You want to be the next Donatello, don't you? Yeah, uh, I would love to. I already eat enough pizza for it, but, um, <laughs> I was no. going to say, I don't know if I'd want to be a turtle on that show, just saying. Oh. Yeah, no, no. But Morgan had a lot of cool, interesting scenes that, like, right from when you first saw him, I mean, when we talked about how he can sense people or not sense but he knows how people are yeah. he's good at, he, he can read people quick yeah, yeah yeah i would hate to play poker with the guy unless he was on my team <sighs> yeah. i would love to um but he like from from when we first saw um deanna's son okay spencer yeah spencer you know we he he was very very afraid and morgan was just like come on we're gonna go take out we're gonna go take back the town let's let's go and he just kind of looked at him for a minute and went Okay, you stay here. Protect, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, protect your mom. You, you know, per, protect your mom. You know, you need to stay. And his whole and I, you know, I will say this. I like how Morgan did warn him. I really love that. And it's like Kevin James said, he's Batman. He Kevin is Smith. Kevin Smith. My yeah, bad. Kevin James is a whole different person. Yes, but he's Batman, where he won't kill. You know, until he had to. But that kind of yeah. broke it. Um, but I like that he warned everybody. He warned yeah. him. He was like, get out. I mean, what did you guys kind of think of Morgan throughout this episode? I, I think that was a big mistake. The group at the end where he was going all Donatello and Ninja Monk Master. And, <laughs> I love You it. know, you, you're going to come at me with blades. <laughs> and they're all cool. gone. You guys need to leave now. I think when... First off, when... The leader of the wolves or the the blonde guy reached down and picked up the pistol. I think somebody should have shot him dead. Yeah. yeah. Somebody should have been on that with Morgan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't think Morgan should have let them leave. I think he should have tied them up and kept them here. Not you need to leave. It should have been you need to surrender now. Knock them all unconscious and tie them up like he did the guy before Carol shot him in the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of want to talk hey, about that what, real quick. What the hell? What are you guys doing? How many more are you? Where are they? Morgan let a large amount of information walk right out yeah. the front gate yeah. and pick up a damn pistol on the way out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I'm wondering if that's going to, because of my theory, if that's going to I think that's going to bite him in the butt. Yeah. But, like, they might. And if he dies because of it, that's going to be really, really sad. But I don't think he's going to. Um, but, I, you know, I, I wanted to talk about, because that scene was interesting with him and Gabriel and that guy. What do you think that guy meant by, you guys don't belong here, or, or we don't belong here, or something like that? No, he said, you don't belong here. Yeah. And my take on that was, you're not of the wild. Because mm-hmm. they see themselves as literal human incarnations of wolves yes yeah so they're st- they're basically saying the world has gone back to the animals and we are wolves mm-hmm. yeah humans do not belong in this world anymore yeah they mentioned that with uh with talking dead you know saying that they're basically past the point of insanity you know being sane to insane and that yeah they're basically like you know we're a pack we're going to survive 
you guys are saying you that that's more like it. You're saying you're humans. You are going to either feed us or die. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I can agree with that. And there was one really kind of big part because we're, we're slowly running out of time and now we can't. I can't. Well, we're, we're not slowly running out. Anymore. Yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, we're, we're, we're rapidly and we, approaching the end and we can't go over. But I, I want to get to the two more little things. OK. Are two big things because Carol had a lot to do with this episode. Her character development was amazing. She oh, kicked yeah. ass. And at the end, you know, because her and Morgan kind of went back and forth to where <laughs> it was. You can't kill anybody. It's like, well, of course you can. But at the end, it really did seem like she had problems with killing people. And she was crying about it. And I think because Morgan said, you don't like how you're turning out. Or you, you, you don't like the killing. You don't like the killing. And she's you, like, you don't like being that person. Yeah. And I think I, I really think she doesn't. I think it's starting to weigh on her that she has to be the one to make all these dis- like the hard decisions that some of the group might not be able to make. It might be weighing on her. And this leads me to my uh, uh, next kind of point of when, because you say Walking Dead symbols. It's yes. always symbols. Yeah. Morgan walking down the street, Carol walking down the street, they meet up at the corner, and then she kind of keeps walking, and he turns and starts walking down the street she was walking. I see, for me, I see that as Carol's kind of like going to come back a little bit and not necessarily where I don't think she's going to do what she did at the prison again, where, oh, I had to kill him because they were going to get us infected. I think she's going to start pulling back. I think she knows I have to kill when I need to. Yes. And I think, mm-hmm. she, but she, I don't have to be this. I don't have to hide anymore. I, I don't have to. I can be me. Well, number one, I think she's definitely out of the closet, and I'm really thankful for that because the closet contains some really ugly sweaters. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and I'm hoping this ends the ugly Carol sweater era. There yeah. was that one with the one. There was the one that looked like blood stains, though. That was cool. They were all Bill Cosby sweaters. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> oh I don't want to. They were. Wanna, they were Cliff were. Huxtable sl- sweaters. Yeah, I don't want to think of uh, Bill Cosby when I'm watching The Walking Dead. Like, oh, I'm no. sorry. No, 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 no. But I, I can agree with you. But by the same token, I think Morgan is going to be walking Carol's path a little bit more because I think mm-hmm. this. When he killed the guy that he ran into, mm-hmm. you know, of uh, the the season five finale, mm-hmm. where we suddenly learned that Morgan is, you know, Donatello without the shell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was the same guy that he ran into in the mm-hmm. house, which am I the only one that was terrified that that was Olivia's house and she was right behind the door and Morgan was going to be like, OK, let me see who's in it. Oh. And she was just going to light him up. That that oh. worried me. I was like, oh my I'm god! Like, don't let Morgan get killed by Olivia. Come on, she doesn't even know how to episode. use a gun. Really? In the no. second episode, don't kill Morgan. Yeah. Off in the second episode, especially not over something stupid. Okay, yeah. if if you know Wolf Nut Job Number One had you know hacked him with the sickle and killed him, okay, and then Carol had busted in and blown his brains out because mm-hmm. that's what would have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was actually worried about that real quick, and I'm kind of glad that Morgan was checking the houses because if I were to attack a town. And I knew that they were, I'd be like, okay, you guys go in, make as much havoc. But then you, some of you, because if they start having guns and if they start winning, go in the houses and hide. Just yeah. hide, yeah. be sleeper agents, wait till everybody's asleep. Then you bust out and you kill every single one of them. Or you yeah. take them captive. So I'm glad that he was checking the house because I would have done the, I, yeah. I, I Yeah, I, no, I agree. You know? Yeah. And I think it's going to be cool when Rick and his group finally show up. Yeah. I just hope they make it there before the zombies do. Yeah. So do I. So do I. I mean, they're... There was a lot this episode that was a lot of fun, and there's still a lot now. I, I got one more question before we go because okay. we're, okay. we're we're clo- we're we're gonna have to wrap it up here. Mm-hmm. But who do you think was at fault? They asked us on Talking Dead, and I want to know who do you think was at fault. Was it Aaron or was it Morgan for letting the wolves oh. go? See, I, cause I I actually voted in that, and my vote went to Aaron because. Morgan letting them live, they would have found Alexandria eventually. But Aaron's backpack basically gave them a blueprint to the town. Look, this is how we secured the walls. This is where the walls are. This is all the stuff we have. Look, we have food. We have solar power. We have bathrooms inside. Yeah. You don't poop in the woods anymore. It, it Morgan letting them live, they would have found it eventually. Finding Aaron's backpack with the pictures and the brochures. That's and the key. And yeah, basically, yeah. 
that was the whole. So yeah, I put it more squarely on Aaron than mm-hmm. I do Morgan. And I I, I agree with that because <laughs> Morgan, it's not bad to give to grant somebody you can live. That's not a bad thing. It's what they do with it, and it's kind of hey, look, this is our town. And I'm 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 gonna let you go, Anna. But I want to say one thing. Mm-hmm. Morgan's philosophy. I'm gonna give you a second chance. I'm going to give you, you know, I'm going to let you live this time. The thing is, if you've done something to screw me over and I let you live and you come back and attack again, there should be no quarter. There should be no third chance. All bets are off. I let you live. You tried screwing me over again. Now I will kill you. And Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that's where Morgan gets to because I think Morgan is going to... I think Morgan and Aaron are both going to be blaming themselves for this. Yeah. yeah because Morgan had to kill the guy that was trying to kill him at his camp. Yeah. And Aaron found his, his backpack. backpack. Yeah. So, and what what were your thoughts? Um, no, I completely agree with that. It's like I didn't want to blame Aaron, but with the blueprints being like like you said, the wolf would have led his pack back to back towards Alexandria eventually, but they wouldn't have found it as quick without Aaron's backpack. And you could just see when Aaron saw that on the dead on the dead wa- the dead wolf, I was gonna say dead walker. Dead wolf, that it tore him apart. It's like, oh, that's where it went. They found it. They found us. This is my fault. Mm-hmm. And Morgan um letting, you know, letting the guy live, almost getting killed by that guy and then having to kill him it was the same look, the same torn up look that, you know, he doesn't know about Aaron's backpack and Aaron doesn't know about the guy, you know, that Morgan found. So they're both going to be blaming each other. And then I'm hoping that maybe they'll at some point meet in this next episode, if not the one after that, and go, you know, look, both of us, this is both of our faults. Not one of us, you know, not one of us can take all of the blame. But I don't think I, that they know. I was going to say, I don't think they're going to blame each other. I think they're each going to blame themselves. That's what I was saying. But then okay. they, all right. they meet all right. I and, go, make sure of that. You know, and go, okay, this is my fault. And the other one going, this is my fault. We're both at fault here. You know, could we this, see our faults. Could so. this lead into what we were talking about last episode with the redemption? Ooh. Everything's, everybody's you trying know? to get redempted. I I see that. I don't think that was just a first episode thing. I think the redemption thing is going to be the entire season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's going to be one of the main arcs, one of the main sticking points throughout this entire season. Yeah. At yeah. least the first half. Yeah. But yeah, I, I can see that being fitting in with the redemption. And uh, one other thing I know... We're we're out yeah. of time. Yeah. yeah, we're way out of time. We're listening to eighty nine point five KCFV Ferguson. Yep, this is dead air. Yep, and uh, I have to bring it up, Deanna. Yeah, I wanted do to you, talk. About do you her. think she has completely abdicated, or because when she was outside the walls, and there were and Maggie was like, "Come on, let's go, let's go help," and Deanna said, "I'm no good in there. I I I can do more out here." Mm-hmm. That's not. Deanna from last season. No. no. That's not Deanna the leader. And I don't think it's simply because she lost Reg. I think that Deanna, because Deanna was present for a lot of episode one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she saw how unprepared her people were yeah. for what is really happening out there. Yeah. And I really think she meant it when she said, if I go in there, I'm just somebody else that you're going to have to save. Yes. Lock me in the cab of the truck. I'll stay out here. I think she is pretty much going to completely abdicate to Rick, except as like a figurehead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's what I was going to say. She seems more like when you walk into town, she's probably going to do like, okay, let's say they get everything. Uh, they get She'll the be the Terminus Mary. Oh. oh yeah. Well, she's not no. going to be Terminus except Mary. she's not going to serve she, up the, uh, you know, the, well, she could. they could have barbecued wolf. She, she's going to uh. record you. She's, she's going to record you. You're going to talk. I heard that that was funny. Uh, <laughs> you're you're going to talk to her and you're going to kind of be like, you know, oh, she's going to be the face. But if you start trouble, hey, come, let's go take a walk. Let's, you wanna, mm. yeah. let's <laughs> come and meet her. Go look at the flowers. Come, come meet the guy behind the curtain. Hey. Yeah. I got stuff that I'm going to beat you with and things I'm going to do. <laughs> come come and meet me. Come and meet Rick. But there's yeah. a lot kind of going on with Deanna. And I'm, I'm excited to kind of see her whole character go on because I don't know if she's losing it or if she's pulling back, coming on board. Mm. I think 
I, I, I think up until this episode, she was losing it. Yeah. About the midway point of this episode, I think she finally – something clicked and said, Rick's right. I'm not, I'm not ready to lead in this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was ready to lead, and she was a strong leader behind the walls when everything was this idyllic, gated community. Mm-hmm. Nobody could get in, and they had a pretty good system. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, Daryl's suggestion about, yeah, no more runs – yeah, I think that's pretty much out the window. They don't have many people left in uh, yeah. in Alexandria. Yeah, I, I don't think that they're going to be able to uh, <clears throat> to get by without some new blood. No pun intended. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I mean, I guess that's pretty much it. Like, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're they're going to have to start making runs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're going they're going to have to start making runs. But we still need to deal with the. Uh, inevitable walkers coming our way and the fact that the group is now split with some returning to uh, Alexandria to try to protect it from these walkers and the other group that's still luring the majority of them away. Yeah, yeah. and you know that's that's interesting because I don't know if because they really didn't show whether or not Daryl, Abraham and Sasha were headed back towards were headed Alexandria. back towards Alexandria. You know, because I mean, they can outrun the the stinkiest parade alive. Oh yeah, not alive. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. from for, for what they said, because I was watching uh, Talking Dead and they did like the dead buzz or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it said that the trip that they're planning on taking in order to get everything right is going to be if if a walker can walk as fast as a human or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. going to take six hours. Right. Yeah, and this was about forty five minutes from when the hit tr- from when the truck hit. Mm-hmm. Right, but what I'm saying is. When that horn went off and the walkers started veering off, are they going to continue trying to lead whatever's left down? Or are they going to say, uh-oh, something bad has happened, <clears throat> turn around, because they can move a lot faster in the ugliest car alive in the motorcycle, <laughs> get back to Alexandria, probably before Rick and Michonne and the others that are on foot do. Mm-hmm. I would, I would, I, for and me, mount defense because if that that whole horde is coming, you're gonna want Abraham and Sasha and Daryl. Oh yeah, definitely out there because they will be able to use the ammunition and the weaponry mm-hmm. to take out as probably a greater number of that advancing horde. But I mean, think th- think about it this way: you're you're moving this, okay? So let's say on the way back. You split the team up, so Rick's going to come back. That's for sure. Rick's Rick heading Michonne. back. I could see. I don't see Michonne. Michonne, could, Michonne was on foot. She's going to head back. Yeah. Well, I could see Michonne on foot, staying with them and lure, helping mm-hmm. them lure and keep track, no. and have no. Glenn and his group go back with Rick. Because you need some of the more heavy hitters. You need the heavy hitters to come back for the attack, but you also need some of the heavy hitters to keep the plan underway. Because do you want to deal with a hundred zombies? Or four hundred zombies, or three thousand. Some, yeah, something like that. So, I, I really do think that it's split. I don't know though. I've been wrong before, but I mean, I that's pretty much all the time we have now. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're completely over. out. It's been a blast. I cannot it's wait for next fun. episode. I'm, I'm jazzed. I'm so waiting for Sunday night. I'm very, very excited. So, thanks everybody for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun, and we will see you next week.